On this week's show, we're going to be discussing, as we come out of lockdown on Monday, what is going to happen in the property market and business in general. In the news, houses are flying. Some are selling even within 24 hours of being in the market. And we're going to be answering all of your questions on this week's Q&A session. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hey, my name's Alastair Cunningham. Hey, my name's Ricky Mandel. Welcome to this week's show. Um, and on this week's show, we've got a pretty decent show this week. Um, it's just myself and Ricky today. Russell's really busy. He's got a lot of land opportunities on, on going at the minute and he's really, really busy. So I've had to put up and I've had to sacrifice Russell for the previous cameraman. So, <laughs> who wouldn't? I know, who, who wouldn't? wouldn't? <laughs> what have you been up to, man? How's things? Yeah, no, we're just... Well, firstly, um, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, you're thank welcome. You for, um, you're welcome. For you're filling welcome. in. I know, filling I know in. that's what everyone wanted anyway. Um, we were getting messages from him saying, where's Ricky? Is he going to be... You know, so I'm here. I'm here, so you're welcome. Um, look, we're... <laughs> he doesn't look impressed. Um, look, we're running events at the minute. We've got virtual events. We've got some small live events as well, um, which we're really <coughs> excited for. So we, uh, this week, we're all about service accommodation yeah. and work with people to get them service accommodation units up and running and showing how to systemize them. It's actually been a really, really good event. So we're here at Service Accommodation Intensive and we're talking about um, how to acquire service accommodation, whether that be rent to rent or whether it be purchase. Um, and actually in the room upstairs, there's people have been actually getting viewings and and actually getting some rent to rent deals lined up so they can go and view them next week and get deals done and actually within the next couple of weeks actually capitalize on the fact that most people are going to be staying in the UK for the holidays this year um, and they're going to be capitalizing on that that market and making massive massive profits so if you want to get registered to the next one we'll put a link downstairs uh, in the in the box below and you can get registered or you can certainly fill out a form and speak to a training advisor about coming along to the next the next one um, so this week um, what have you been up to uh, I've, I've been up to it. I've been running running events, um, viewing houses, dealing with refurbs. I've got a big refurb ongoing at the minute, and today there's a load of tradesmen there. I've just been told the gardeners are there digging up the front garden to, re, uh, to relay all the front gardens. Uh, carpet fitter turned up to do all the carpets upstairs. So, yeah, it's pretty lot going on at the minute. Good. So on this week's show, we're going to be talking about, um, on Monday, uh, the, the old BJ has announced that we're going to be coming out of, uh, he's easing the restrictions for lockdown. Um, so from Monday, it means we can hug people again. Um, we can You're not stay going to be over. trying to hug me, are you? No. <laughs> uh, we can stay over at people's houses and we can actually go to a restaurant and have dinner inside instead of sitting out in the freezing cold. What I will tell you is last night we went out for dinner, uh, myself, our new cameraman, David, um, and he got he got freezing cold because he rocked up in a t-shirt and he was sat there <laughs> shivering. And we were all big, big uh, jackets and he was sat there shivering his... His, uh, his his skinny arms off, so <laughs> it was all pretty cool. But anyway, as we come out of as we come out, yes, I know you've got big guns. I know that it was it was sarcasm. Um, so as we come out of um, lockdown, what do we think is going to happen? For I mean, businesses are going to be loving this, obviously, because they've been tied up and and restricted for year, like over a year now, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they're they're frantically getting ready for Monday. Um, I certainly know all the pubs and that locally to me, but like our local, my local, they're desperate to get get open again so they can start serving inside and start making some money. Um, so what do you think is going to yeah, happen I think, for, I for think, the property markets and business? I think with businesses, I think a lot of uh, business owners are probably thinking how to uh, put into a strategy of coming out of this. Yeah, you know, to really make the most of it. Um, and putting plans in place. So I think, yeah, I think as long as you've got business owners have a strategy in place, then uh, they're gonna they're gonna thrive over the next few months and hopefully as well. And property, I will look at it from a viewing's point of view as well because property right now the properties are selling quick, which we're gonna talk about in the news. Yeah. But I think with the viewing side of things. I'm unsure because right now you can do a lot of viewings as virtual viewings. It's kind of like offices yeah. now as businesses, offices, you can do meetings and a lot of people work from home because we have Zoom. So if you look at viewings, when they've been taken online to do an online viewing, I don't know if viewings will pick up a lot more because a lot of people just do virtual ones. The, the thing is, think about it, right? Now we're coming out of uh, coming out of lockdown and by June 21st, apparently all restrictions will be lifted. So we'll, we'll wait and see for that. But. As restrictions get lifted and we're, we can go shopping again, we can go inside buildings, we can whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, what's going to happen with all these people that were previously working, that have been working from home for the last year? Are they going to go back to offices? 
or are they going to continue to work from home? Um, who knows? Maybe, well, I saw maybe, in London they're converting a lot of offices to apartments. Yeah, maybe maybe um, employers are actually realising that the people working from home is maybe a little bit more productive, maybe because they don't have to travel, they can focus on just get up, work, as opposed to get up, travel for, for an hour to get to work, I don't know. I mean, is it productive, is it less productive? I don't know, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm, a, I'm kind of with the whole, actually you need to be at an office, because I do believe that will be far more productive, but maybe, I, I, I don't know, maybe some employers are saying actually it's beneficial for them, the employers to work from home. Um, but I do think you're going to see a lot of offices yeah. shutting down and changing the way they do work and the way they do business um, because I think oh, during furlough and during <coughs> COVID, they're realising that lots of uh, people can actually work from home. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think I, I read as well somewhere that um, they actually think people that there's going to be less uh, sick days because okay. when people are feeling ill, if they're at home, they can just work in their dressing gowns yeah. from home anyway. Fair enough. You know, enough. so what do you think it's going to do for the housing market in the sense of house prices? Do you think because um, house prices are, are, are on a trajectory upwards, they're not going down anytime soon. So, what do you think um, is going to happen? Do you think restrictions are lifting, people are back to business, uh, people are back to making more money? Um, what do you think is going to happen with house prices? Do you think they're going to keep going? Do you think they're going to sort of start to mellow out? I, I think they're going to Obviously, mellow we've out. got stamp duty coming to an end, stamp yeah. duty exemption or relief coming to an end very soon. So do you think that's going to start causing the house prices to mellow out a lot? I, I think so, and I may be wrong, but I think so. Exactly for what you just said, you know, the Sam duty coming to an end, um, all of the, the, the help that the government are giving, all of that's going to be slowing down, which is going to be stopping people from, from buying. One thing I will add, and some people won't agree with this, like, like there's, there's a lot of critics out there for the government. They, they, they're, they're very happily um, say, oh, I could do a better job. Well, you probably couldn't. Um, the reality is you definitely couldn't. Um, I think the government have done... a, a, a pretty top job on getting us through this. Um, think about it, all these loans, all these C-bill loans, bank, uh, bounce back loans, all these, these grants and all these, everything that they've put out there to try and help small businesses, um, obviously it's all got to be paid back, so it's all gonna have to come back at some point, but I think they've done a pretty sterling job of um, getting us as, as best as they can through it. Do I agree with a lot of the procedures with regards to lockdown? No, I don't. But with the, with, the, with the cards they've been dealt, so to speak, um, and with the situation they've been put in, um, I think they've done a fairly decent job of, of um, helping us get through it. Now, what do you think? Do you think they've done a good job? Do you think they've done a terrible job? Um, are you one of these people that think, do you know what, I could do that better? Are you one of these sideline players, you know, like the uh, football match, that sit in the crowds and are, are dictating what the bosses do? Like, are you one of them people, or do you actually think, do you know what, they've actually done a fairly decent job? Um, what do you think? I think they've done a. I think they've done a good job. I, can't, I agree with everything you've said. Yeah. I agree with everything you've said. So um, I, I think how the housing market is going to continue as it is. Um, Do you not think it will mellow out a little bit? Not any time soon. I think maybe in a couple of months, maybe it might yeah. start to slow down. But it's just crazy at the minute. Like houses are flying off the shelves. Houses are getting way more than asking price. Like because as well, yeah. think about it. People right now that may be furloughed or that everyone's got a lot of time on their hands at the minute. So yeah. it gives people an opportunity to be able to, you know, look for houses that they want to live in and, and, and move and do everything that they want to do now. When things go back to normal, they're not gonna have as much time. So I do think there's gonna be less demand. Yeah. Potentially. So that's well, what people also, mellow it out. Got, one of the reasons why I think that the house markets, the housing markets have, have gone upwards, um, people working from home, so they've, they've, they've realized that they don't need to travel into London or into the city for their job, they can actually do it from home, so maybe they're moving out to different parts of the country because they can work from home, and they're enjoying the benefits of more space and gardens and things like that. Like I know, I know a lot of people have moved out of apartments and things like that to get uh, into gardens and yeah. get into houses with, with, with a bit of land. Now, one of the things I was speaking to a letting agent a, a couple of weeks ago about was London in particular, and I, mean, I would imagine city centres across, across the country, but London in particular, the, the rent prices are actually going down on apartments in London. Like, apartments in London, rent prices are going down, they're not going up, and they're taking a bit of a hit. And because people are moving out. People are moving out, and also people are, there's, there's less demand for the properties, so people are negotiating harder to get lower rents. Landlords are having to give up, give up and, and give lower rents if they want uh, a tenant. I think and if you're doing rent to rent, that's not a bad thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, me and Russell talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, rent, rent, service accommodation, things like that. Now is a great time to secure the properties if you can oversee the next three or four months until the, the, the place sort of erupts, okay? Because it will erupt um, in the sense of bookings will come in fast and fast and thick. Um, now, with regards to rent prices dropping, I, I, I can vouch for that because I live in uh, an apartment block in, in Fulham and it's a very nice apartment block. Um, and my rent is X amount and it's actually, I can get in the same, I've, I've already looked on on um, like Rightmove and, and Zoopla and things like that and I can see that in the same building, there's the same uh, executive apartment that I've got, but they're three, four hundred pound a month cheaper than what I've got. So my rent review period is coming up with my landlord. Um, my six month uh, tenancy is due to come up uh, end of July. And he's like, okay, great, you need to pay your rent now. We need to get an, a next contract going forward. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine, but we need to have a bit of a rent review because I can get, I'm in apartment 31, I can get apartment 12 and it's okay, fine. It's 20 or it's like uh, 50 square feet smaller. So it's not small, it's not much smaller, but it's not, it, it's a similar size, sim still two bedroom, nice kitchen, that's £300 a month cheaper. So I, I'm saying to my landlord, great, but I, I can move from 31 to 12 and save £300 a month. So do you want me to continue renting your place at that price, knowing that I pay my rent up front and I'm a very good la uh, tenant, what do you want to do? So the power's in me. I've got the power. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, it's just great. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely great. So now's now's the time to capitalise on on these um, these problems. Yeah, I agree. And I think if you're looking to become an entrepreneur in property and do rent to rent, I think now's a great time to get involved because it, because it'd be the exact same reason you've just said. Yeah. Um, I think it's awesome. I, I think it is. So I'm 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 so happy we're coming out. Um, we're coming out. Of the, the restrictions are easing. Hopefully, we'll June twenty first. There'll be all lifted and there'll be no th such thing as social distancing that'll be a thing of the past yeah. masks will be a thing of the past um, and we can just crack on like it was two years ago and everyone do well in business everyone crack on have a nice life enjoy your life and just do what we've got to do <laughs> do you know what I think? enjoy your life and do because what you've got it's to just do because you can't you can't deny it, it, don't, no, it, don't, it holds you back it has been a bit of a miserable um last 12 months everyone on lockdown people not knowing what they can can't do stuck in the houses so i for one i'm stoked that it's coming out um so yeah that's it really yeah and um, but that leads us on to um the news so in the news this week we're going to be discussing uh, an article which I, I read yesterday and let me just bring that article up in, and i read it in the um the liverpool echo uh, so i read this online and house prices house buyers are actually fighting over properties and they're flying, they're selling quicker. Like they're selling so fast. Like some in less than 24 hours from going on the market. Um, and they're selling for higher fees. And I don't think there's been a time in history where this has happened. I really don't. And I've seen it from a sourcing point of view. It's, it's, it's actually quite difficult to source properties at the minute because they're going on the market. You've got to be on it 24 hours a day. Yeah. You've got to be checking right move, checking all those sites. It's like, far, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you've got to be on there and ringing up the agents. And what's happening is the agents are pre-qualifying the buyers more so now than ever. Um, because there's so much demand for properties. It, it's... I went to view a house the other day and we put an offer in max two hours later. And uh, when we put the offer in, they were like, it's already gone. Yeah. <laughs> we, already, we only viewed it two hours ago. Yeah. But it already had an offer accepted straight after. Yeah, and like, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty decisive guy, so if I view a house, I'll put an offer in there and then. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I, what I'm finding at the minute is, like, for instance, um, no, me, me, and one of, <laughs> me and one of my business partners, um, between us, in the last three weeks, I've put in 42 offers. And in 42 offers, less than four of them have been accepted. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty... Are you alright? I just had a, a small hiccup there. But <laughs> that's 42, four offers accepted. Um, so that's 10% of what we've offered on. Now, some of the offers were cheeky, but some of the offers were a fair offer. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. Yeah. But you know what? We're entrepreneurs. We're educated. We're trained. We know what we're doing. We've got to get out there. We've got to keep going. We've got to keep plugging. 
Uh, what are you doing differently now to um, accommodate the current trends? Yeah, current I'm markets? I'm actually doing uh, a bit more due diligence than what I normally would before I go and view it. Yeah. So then I can really make a decision quicker at the like you do at the property um, or, or very soon after, and a, and a decisive decision as well. So not just a, a like a low blow offer and, and go from there. It's more of a I've done my due diligence and know exactly what we can offer. Yeah. Here it is. Take it or or you don't. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I agree. So look, it is what it is. Uh, property market properties are flying off the market. You just have to be quick. Make sure you're you're spending enough time doing this. Um, it does amaze me. People want to get into property, um, but they they spend the odd hour or two here here or there and everywhere uh, looking at properties or looking at viewings online, but they they don't actually put the required effort in. Um, so all I'd say is put so much effort into doing this because the good will always rise to the top. All right. So just keep looking. Keep keep doing what you can. Keep viewing. It will turn. Don't worry, guys. It will turn. So that's what it is this week. I hope you, you found that useful. Um, so we're gonna move on to the questions. Um, and this week, um, we have quite a few questions come through, but I'm gonna pick the best three. Um, now, if you don't know, when I um, when we just before we do a podcast, uh, myself or this week, Ricky, we would have gone onto Instagram and done an Instagram live asking you for questions and they come through via messaging. Um, so I've got a couple of questions here on my phone now. I'll just grab them for you now. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get on to my questions. Okay, this question <coughs> is from Lucien. Lucien is actually an Academy member, really great guy, he's been doing amazing stuff. Now the question from Lucien is, he is looking at service accommodation, but he doesn't want to uh, rent service accommodation, he wants to, it's quite a long question, so I'll break it down. He doesn't want to uh, rent service accommodation, he wants to buy service accommodation. So, should he be looking at commercial lending for that purpose? Now, <clears throat> again, this is, I, I did have a similar question to this a few weeks ago. Um, and the, 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 the straightforward answer to that is, it, it, it all depends on the property, it depends on the purchase price, it depends on your situation. The best thing I can recommend you do is go and speak to Steve Bench. Steve Bench is our, our, our recommended mortgage broker from Property Investors with Samuel Leeds. He'll advise you correctly. Um, so go and speak to Steve. He can give you the correct advice regarding mortgages. That way you're buying it correctly with the right intention uh, at the start. What you don't want to do is take a property, buy it on a buy to let mortgage, and then run it as service accommodation because that's not what you intended to do it. It's technically mortgage fraud. So if you take a property uh, with a basis and you, you tell the broker that you're gonna be running it as a buy to let and then you just run it as a service accommodation, well, that's not what you intended to do and that's not what you told the mortgage broker. You told the mortgage broker and the mortgage, the, the company, the lender, that you would be using it as a buy to let. So you have to use it as a buy to let. But that doesn't mean that if your circumstances change, you can't change the product or the mortgage, but you, you must give them the opportunity to, to know about this. So just be open, be honest, be transparent, go and speak to a mortgage broker, give them the details and let them advise you the best, most legal and ethical way to do this on the correct mortgage. So you avoid any penalties, any fines or, or any sort of a mortgage fraud, okay? So I hope that helps. Uh, next question. Now. This question is from Marie. Now, Marie asks, um, I'm looking to get into property sourcing. Okay, property sourcing is something she wants to do because she doesn't have much money to invest. She said that, not me. So, um, I'm looking to get into property sourcing. I've got four to five thousand pounds available, but what I don't want to do is waste that money. I want that money to go as far as possible. What would you recommend I do to start with? Now, I get asked this question a lot. I've got a little bit of money. Um, how do we get started in property sourcing as quick and as cost effectively as possible? Obviously property sourcing, you've got an element of legalities and compliance that you have to, you have to work to. Um, so you're gonna have to set up your business which will come with cost, okay? Um, and the, 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 the legalities and the compliance will set you back probably 12 to 1500 pounds depending on what insurance policies you get and things like that. What I would do if you're looking to sort of save as much money as possible is firstly you need to get trained. Get educated, get trained, okay? And then go and find somebody, so you don't have to go out and get compliance straight away. Go and find somebody, such as Ricky, who you can bring deals to, and you can Ricky will sell them for you, and he'll co-deal source them for you. That way you don't have to become compliant at present. You can focus on going out, finding the deals, finding the leads, get good at that, 
then say, hey, Rick, can you sell, sell this deal for me? Ricky will agree a terms, terms and conditions with you and how much he's going to pay you. And then Ricky will deal with the compliance, the legal side of it, the financial side of it, and his company will then deal with that side of things. So it's a very cost-effective way to get involved, start generating a little bit of cash flow, so you can then reinvest that cash flow to become compliant. So what do you... What, what, what yeah, do you I, I agree with that 100%. Um, but I do think... The priority is is the education and the training. Yeah. Because you need to know how to find good deals. I agree, you need yeah. to know how to find the good deals and, and put them all together. Um so yeah, and then once you've done that, you've got that training, then look to, to co source with someone like myself, um, where where we can facilitate that until you get compliant. Yeah. Um but you need to know what you're doing. You good need to know stuff, what you're doing. Good stuff. Okay, next question. Hope that helps, Marie. Next question from Edward. Edward wants to do lease option agreements and he's found a property. Uh, the property is in Newcastle, which is the prime area for LOAs. Um, it won't quite work as a HMO. He, he's thinking of having to do it as a single let. What sort of profit margin should he be working to to make sure he's still making some money? Uh, Edward, unfortunately, you're going to have to answer that question. What profit margin are you happy with? Now, personally, me, I wouldn't do it. It, it, it depends on the so many factors involved here. How much money do you have to put into it to get it? Except that's that's number one. Secondly, is how much money are you going to get out of it over a period of a year? It's a return on investment calculation. So if you're happy with that return, do it. If you're not happy with that return, then don't do it. I personally wouldn't do it unless I'm making five hundred pounds a month. So I wouldn't do it as a single. I would only do it as a HMO. Um, but if it doesn't work as a HMO, I wouldn't do it at all. My that's me. Um, but I'm I'm a bit further down the line than you are. When I first started in this, I would have taken it on and I would have done it if I was making £200 a month, okay? So it depends on what profit margin you want and what you need from the deal to make money from it. And yeah, that's, that's all I've seen it. What do, you, what do you think? 100% agree. I just throw a question back to say, what would you be happy with? Yeah. Good stuff, guys. Listen, thank you for tuning in. We're not doing a quiz this week because we need Russell to be there because obviously he's kicking my ass at the minute. So we need him here for that. But listen, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you follow myself and, and Ricky on Instagram and social media and Russell. Uh, drop a comment below. Tell us what your best bit was. Tell us what you want to talk about on the next show. And we'll be there. We'll be helping you. And we'll, we, hope you, we wish you well on your journey. Make sure you tune in. Uh, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. And we'll see you next time. And let's all enjoy the lifting of these rules. Guys, peace out, much love, next time. See you then.